chances now. You bet, Chelsea Gray. Masterful. My style too different. My style too different. I believe I'm showing now. All right, she's a three-time WNBA champ. She's been a Finals MVP, a Commissioner's Cup MVP, three-time All-WNBA, all-time. I, I, the list, by the way, when we introduce people, Chelsea, this one's a little bit longer yeah, than usual. I'm not going to lie. It's, like, it's a lot going on here. Very decorated. But the three titles, you got one with the Sparks, two with the Aces. Does one yeah. stand out above the others? Um, I think this last one stands out a little bit more. Like, we heard so much noise throughout the entire season and to kind of quiet it that way. Um, it was different for me, right? I wasn't playing in the closeout game, but like this one was just huge because of all the adversity we had hit throughout the entire season. I like that. Chelsea, you, you, you win a couple MVPs in 2022, so I'm sure it was frustrating for you to, be, to miss the closeout game in game four uh, of this past uh, WNBA Finals. What was that like for you? What were your emotions? How did you feel having to sit out and have to cheer, cheer on your team from the bench for the closeout game? Yeah, the competitor, I mean, like, it, like you dream about playing in the finals and, like, that closeout game, it's even sweeter to win it on the road. I've never won a championship at home. And so I understand and I love that feeling. And so I had, like, 24 to 48 hours where it was hard, like, just understanding that I wasn't going to be able to play for the rest of the season. Like, even if it went to a game five, like I wasn't gonna, wasn't gonna be able to play. Um, so I took that time and was kind of to myself, but then I came around the team a little bit more, uh, just to see them, just to see them, and it helped me and it helped them. Um, but I, I turned into a coach real fast on the sideline, like just <laughs> yelling out plays, remembering scouting reports, like I was locked in from the beginning. And then when we won, I, I threw the crutches and everything, nothing else about it. <laughs> How's your foot doing now? Hopefully, hopefully it's doing better. Yeah, it's doing well. Um, I had a minor surgery on it to get it all repaired, and uh, my foot's feeling better, so I can't wait for next season. Those right. rings about to be nice. Chelsea, I don't want to be creepy, but I was actually sitting across from y'all's bench for that closeout game, and you and Candace Parker just chirping at the end. I was like, this is the show within the show, and I just kind of kept watching you two, and it was, it was yeah. awesome. That's just my own side note I just wanted to share with you. Uh, the Usher situation. The videos yeah. that came out were fantastic. <laughs> um, but to be invited to the concert as a celebratory moment, how was it? How, what, how does all that unfold? Yeah, well, it was not like broadcasted so much, but <laughs> it, I mean, you saw it a, a little bit was that we got called on stage before this. So I'm walking up there with the boot, not knowing what the heck to, to expect. Um, and they played music and we're dancing. So it was a fun <laughs> vibe. And then he came to our area because Asia had called him out a, a few times throughout the years. Um, but it was cool. Man, he's a great entertainer. Uh, his music is like timeless. Like you can listen at any moment. Um, it's like we grew up with, with his music the entire time. So it was kind of like a nostalgia with it, but like it was super fun and really like get to celebrate it with him as well. It's a good party. Chelsea, you guys became the third team ever to go back-to-back -back, uh, WNBA championships. Sparks did it. The Comets did it. Where do you guys rank when it comes to back-to-back -back championships? Uh, <laughs> oh, man. Of course, no um, the legacy and, and, the, and the script is still being written, right? I think uh, the Comets kind of done it, did it first. I think we're working our way to, like, have that legacy of the Comets of, like, the inaugural seasons and, like, being able to do that. Um, but ask me next year, and we'll be, that'll be the best dynasty. Okay. That'll right. be the best. Hmm. Yeah. You've played with so many talented players throughout the course of your career and had so much success, but you got to tell me, what's it like playing with Asia Wilson? How's that? She's amazing, man. Like, I, I came to this team three years ago, right? And each year, you just see improvements, and I think that's all you want out of, like, your franchise player. Like, they come in, you know they have a target on their back, like you want them to get better each time. And like she's added to her game every second. So it makes me look like great. Like there's <laughs> passes that I make to her. And I'm just like, I don't know. I, I feel like you're the only person that's gonna be able to catch her right now, so I'm gonna just throw it. And she catches it, she has great hands, she has great touch. And like she's doing it on both ends. Like to be able to be in shape like that and do it on both ends consistently, um, it, it's amazing. And each year she's getting better. So it's a luxury to be able to play with somebody like her. And she's added to her legacy starting at a very young age. And fun. Right. Like she's mm -hmm. fun. Right. Super fun. On, on and off the court, you guys have so much personality and y'all have so much fun. I, I enjoy watching you guys 
um, at the press conference, having <laughs> having a little bit to drink and enjoying that moment. Who who would you say is the funniest person on that Aces team? Man, it's like a me sometimes and Sydney Colson is oh, Asia. Like sure. everybody sure. has like their own little comedic like time. <laughs> it's it's hilarious. And then like sometimes we'll end up being like a viral hit and Sydney's doing something. I don't know. It just like it's not rehearsed. It's all real. Like everything is great and um, we just have fun, and I think that's the that's the time that you don't get back. So we just be in the moment. She's like a comedian. I like got some of those videos out there. I'm just like, okay, this is thoroughly entertaining. Not entertaining, however, our dumbasses on radio, and uh, you specifically got to call one out. I'm not gonna say his name because I, I refuse to. But he was the guy that said that uh, the best high school boys team could beat y'all in a game. I, at what point? Which is ridiculous. It's the dumbest the thing. But he's a mouth breather. But all of that being said. Why? Why do we continue this dumb narrative about disrespecting women's basketball? You know, I really, I really don't know. Like, there's, there's this old saying: if you don't, you don't have anything nice to say, don't say anything at all. Right? <laughs> like, I think there's a lot of judgment that gets that happens um, about our league and about our players around with people that has have never seen us play at all, never came to right. a game. Um, but I. I don't understand like what made him say that, which is why I just tweeted back dumbass. Like it was just, <laughs> it, it was just like that. It was just dumb. It's like it doesn't deserve like more attention and response, and then it went like crazy. And so I, I didn't know it was gonna have that effect. But it's just like dumb people in this world that just do, does things just to get attention. And I feel like that's what he did in that moment. It is a different world, and I don't think they teach that in schools anymore, not to say anything. <laughs> no. <laughs> people just say whatever to make them relevant. Um, Coach <laughs> Becky Hammond, I got a chance to have her in San Antonio before she started out. She now has two uh, titles. Do you, how, how do you like playing for her, one? And two, do you ever see her leaving and becoming a first NBA head coach as a female? Um, I said this in an interview like a, a while. I think she's the best coach I've ever had. Uh, I think she does a great job of being able to hold somebody accountable and be in the moment and enjoy it as well and have fun. Um, she, that line, she's like t always like the best at that. And I think that's what, that's why the, the players that she coaches just love her and just have so much confidence in her. So when she's yelling at us in that fourth quarter, like, we're just like, oh, I know it's from a place from love, you know, and we really appreciate that. And shoot, if she's the first like head coach, it would be legendary. You know, selfishly, I don't want her to go anywhere. Yeah. Like, yeah. I don't want her <laughs> even to answer the phone because they might do a great job of um, bringing her there. But I mean, that would, she's constantly making history. So um, I'm always going to cheer somebody on that's trying to, you know, make a legacy and uh, be in the history books. I know I'm torn on that one because on the one hand I'm like it'd be awesome if she went back and coached the Spurs, but I don't want her to leave either. I, I would love <laughs> so to I get see it. it. No, I, don't yeah. want to leave. I get it. I get it. Um, there were five number one draft picks on the floor during the finals this year, so obviously you get that top pick in the WNBA. That's good stuff. If Caitlin Clark leaves this year and decides to enter the draft, like how impactful do you think she'll be right off the bat? Yeah, I think there's always a learning curve when you get to the league. Like now. No, no matter how great you are in college, right? Defensively, I feel like it's the hardest part to like adjust mm. to when you get to the league. Um, so that will be an adjustment for her. But there's, she can flat out shoot the rock. Um, you have to be on the up on the screen. Even I think there's going to be times where there's players around her um, that's going to draw a lot of attention, and there's going to be more open shots for her in the league than there is right now. She has a lot of attention on her at Iowa. Um, so it'll be interesting, like fit and like the players around her is also. Um, a decider factor, but I think she's going to continue to get better. Do you, if she asked for you your advice, would you would you say stay or would you say no? It's time to time to get to work. Um, I think it depends where she wants her career to go. Hmm. But if I was in college and NIL was what it is now, <laughs> I would be staying <laughs> until probably like six <laughs> to like six years. You know? <laughs> college, college is a great time, and you get. Um, it's like you're you're making money. You're preparing yourself for after college. Um, it's an opportunity to see what you want to do after basketball. So, I if I was in that position, um, I would stay. Chelsea, your your guys' playing style is the most fun in the league to me. I enjoy watching you guys play. You had a behind the back pass to Asia Wilson mm. early in the season. Mm, uh, Steph yeah. Curry shared it. A lot of people gave it love. Tyrese Halliburton called it the best pass he's ever seen. What did that mean to you? Um, 
you know, I just was like, if, if I'm going to do it, I might as well just try. And it has to be to Asia. I was just like, like, if it's a turnover, it's a huge miss. But like, everybody will be like, okay, that's just Chelsea. Look at that. And so when it connected and she stayed locked in for like an extra couple seconds, I was like, oh, I got to throw it. But I kind of set it up in a way that that was the only way that I can get it. Could I have made like a jump stop and like pass with the left hand? Probably. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, high risk, high reward, you know? So I just tried it and... Um, it was one for the history books, for sure. Your style of play, who would you say that you, you, you pattern your game after? I think it's a combination of a couple things. Like, I used to watch Magic Johnson play all the time, like the flair. Um, I used to watch Tisha Penichero that played for the Sacramento Monarchs a lot. The post-up game from the guard position, I would watch the fadeaway like Chris Paul would do. So um, I think there's a combination, and I just took some things from, from different people to, to kind of make my game. I'm glad you mentioned Chris Paul. He's called the point god. You're po called the point god. Did I, did I nail it? Shut up. Kinda. Yeah, I, I'm not, I just, <laughs> <laughs> you know what? That was the best I could do. Uh, who's the real point god? The god. god. You gotta put, you gotta I mean, put a little. It's spelled differently, but you know, I'm gonna say me. <laughs> okay, perfect. <laughs> you were on that 2020 Olympics team. Is it true that you beat Draymond in a game of dominoes? Are you a big domino player? It is true. Oh, it okay. is true. Don't let him tell you any different. Did you I mean, win some money? Maybe a couple more times, but it's very true. <laughs> that I beat I'm nice and domino. See me at the I need to okay. like the, the, the table, the square one. We was on this weird table, like you couldn't slap it down as well. It's kind of affected my game a little bit. Did you did you take some money from him? Um, I I, I can either say yes or no <laughs> right now. <laughs> any other any other good stories from that time with the Olympics other than the dominoes that you guys shared or had you know fun playing? Any other games? Yeah, we were um we all had like this players lounge and because it was different, we didn't we weren't able to go to different events and so we had to create like moments in time where we were just like just chilling and so we were all at the players lounge, they were able to play spades. I mean we had Uno popping, we had just games, there was like there was game consoles, Xbox, everything. So we were just finding ways to like spend our time because we didn't want to be in our rooms for two weeks. Um and we weren't able to be out and like tour and go see places. She didn't mention Bure. No, no. Yeah, no Bure. Bure. <laughs> Chelsea, besides Draymond, who are some of your favorite athletes in other sports? Um, I'm a Coco Golf fan. I like Serena Williams. Um, but they're great. I watch tennis um, a lot. Like, if I wasn't playing basketball, I maybe would try tennis a little bit more. Mm. Um, so I, I really like those those two play those two tennis players for sure. All right, before we let you go, you and your wife expecting your first child. How's uh, uh -oh. how's that prep go? Yeah, it was great. It's a journey. <laughs> <laughs> um, step by step, getting better. But I can't wait. I've been excited this whole time. I've been wanting to, I've been wanting a kid for a while. So. Um, I'm glad. I was gonna say, Danny, any, you've sleep got a little one, right? Sleep when a baby sleeps. Yeah. Any advice? Any advice? Sleep when a baby sleeps. I got a three month old. Yeah. Make sure you get your rest. The first month is hectic. <laughs> stay on pace. Stay steady. Stay <laughs> positive. <laughs> stay on pace. It'll get, it'll get better. Just keep that in mind. It'll get better. Wow. That's, that's what I hear. That's what I hear. Sounds daunting when you say it like that. Chelsea, this has been awesome. We appreciate the time. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me.